we want to just go left to right and you can introduce your character and then we can figure out what sort of bonds or flags these people would have with each other. Uh, Kimbo. Left, so left based on the, the keeper. Hi. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm a thief. Um, so you said there's a lot of undead, but is there a lot of um, living? Are we, is this focus post-apocalyptic? Are there people around? Are um, there are people around. There are, you're, you're in a town. Uh, there just also happen to be, you know, ghouls in the sewers, things like that. Okay. So my, my idea is that uh, I'm a thief. I'm eking out a, a living on the edges of the society. I think I'm a bit of a bookie, maybe... Uh, there are, I don't know. That's all I got. Okay. Cool. Um, Corin, Corin the Mirthful. I like that. Yes, I'm Corin the Mirthful, uh, this giant man with mighty thews, as my, uh, other little playbook says. <clears throat> um, I am covered in tattoos and scars, but I dress in silks and finery. I am, uh, uh, a man of, of inf what is it? Uh, infinite pleasures and uh, gigantic melancholies and gigantic mirth, I think was the original quote. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I just like to hit things with my sword and then party afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Every time I have run through this, we've had a barbarian and they've all had mighty thews, but they've all been very different aside from that. <laughs> Um, uh, Baldwin. So Baldwin. Baldwin is a halfling fighter. Um, uh, he has hard eyes and uh, shorn hair, like a buzz cut, basically. Um, very tan skin, but you will find, like, underneath the straps to his armor, uh, it's very pale skin, so, like, he just spends a lot of time outdoors. Uh, and for a halfling, he's he's pretty, pretty uh, well built. But, um, yeah, that's... He's a pretty emotionless sort of character, so interesting. He's uh, he's kind of the opposite of our other badass fighting character. One is excessively emotional in all directions, and the other is just kind of real buttoned down. And I am looking forward to seeing these two bounce off each other. Uh, and um, Lucian. I'm Lucian and uh, the bard, uh, he, him, and uh, Lucian uh, has um, been run out of a few towns, so that's how he found his way here. And the reasons uh, vary from town to town. Sometimes it's because he uh, got himself involved with uh, the, the wrong person romantically. Sometimes uh, due to just, um, you know, maybe some plans went awry that uh, he intended to make some money off of and didn't. Good, good. Um, so are any of you like locals to this town or are you all travelers? I imagine that uh, Baldwin definitely would be. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm currently local and okay. established in some way. Cool. Uh, there's just, yeah. there's like, um, there's a move that you get a plus one if you're local. Uh, and oh. there's, I was going to say there's one move that like you can really only use if you're local, but there's really no reason that, uh, yeah, you couldn't use it otherwise. Um, okay, so you were all standing in the snow outside an abandoned temple. This isn't like an Indiana Jones type temple. It's not, you know, ancient and has been abandoned for centuries or anything like that. It's been abandoned for a couple of years. Uh, but in that time, it's been overgrown with vines and there's a tree has fallen on the roof and like knocked the, the bell tower off. Uh, and your job is to get into this place and clear out the ghosts that are reputed to be in this place. Uh, I have a question for you, which is, who asked you to do this and why did you agree? Uh, I think my boss probably asked me to do it. I think I maybe got on his bad side and, and my punishment was to 
recruit some people naive enough to, to go to the rough haunted part of town and to reclaim a little bit of it for the living. Cool. So who is your boss? Uh, my boss is uh, Mickey One-Eye. Uh, he's, uh, he's a bit of a gangster. He runs, I don't know, half a jawbone. Uh, okay. And leaves the other half to the undead. Um, you know, I run the books for him, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, and he caught me fixing fights. Maybe one of the other three was helping me uh, get a, di- a fighter to take a dive or something. Okay. Uh, and rather than kill me, he sent me on a suicide mission. And I don't know, does a, I thought maybe uh, Lucian might have participated in whatever misadventure it was. That seems pretty likely. You're new in town, right? Fairly new, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, maybe you trusted me. I misled you. You were young and naive. <laughs> presenting myself. <laughs> Less naive and, and more, uh, and more uh, careless and, and reckless. If it sounds like fun, he'd try it. Cool. Is that why you're here? Because it just sounds like fun. I mean, you're snowed in. It's you know the it's it's kind of a miserable late winter. It's uh, you know the air is full of smog from the factory. Nobody really wants to do anything. You're bored. Yeah, there's only so much you can do indoors. Yeah. Um, so you made this trek out here into the, not far into the woods, but like into kind of the edge of the woods that is creeping back around the edges of town and to, yeah, break into this temple. Uh, where are the other two of you here? I've never had the opportunity <laughs> to hit a ghost with a sword before. This should be fun. Cool. <laughs> I think someone's <laughs> promised me payment. Um, yeah, that would be the church, which would really like to get its property back. They're currently running their, their new temple out of, uh, you know, a little previously a store in the market. Uh, yeah, they, uh, Father Flutius would very much like to have this building. Is and, there a um, specific treasure that's associated with this temple, temple that I could have uh, used to tempt Baldwin? Um... I don't think you know specific treasure. You do know there's, it's said that uh, there's something under the temple, down in the crypts that uh, has cursed it. Um, And you know, cursed objects are not great to carry around, but they are pretty good to sell. How's that sound, Baldy? That's fine. Yep. No worries. Excellent. Um, yeah. So you're standing here. The uh, there are footprints in the snow going around the building. Um, so someone else has been here before you. Uh, but it, all of the doors are locked. Uh, how many doors are there? Um, there are how many doors are there? So there's like the main front door. Uh, and then there's a kind of a side door that like if you go around back, there's a courtyard and there's a little side door off of that and um, below the, the broken off bell tower. Um, I, go, I go to the, the side door and uh, attempt to pick the lock. Okay. Uh, I know you have a move for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, mixed success. Okay. Um, the tree above you that like is kind of half on the roof. Um, it's also half on the wall that's just above that door. And like every time you sort of push on that door, it seems to shift a little bit. Uh, you can open the door, but the tree is probably going to fall. Um, okay. I, I, uh, Gesture for who's bigger between Corrin and Baldwin? Quick, decide. Well, Baldwin's a halfling. 
um, in that case, I gesture for Corin to, to uh, just I, I kind of wave my hand at him. And go, yeah. Of course, stand back, my friends, as we eschew this version of civilization that we call locks. <laughs> uh, uh, and I, and I, I tell him that, hey, hey, Corin, uh, you know, uh, the store, it's, it's stuck or something. Can you uh, use those uh, big sinews to, to get it open? Oh, necessarily. Um, can I, can I away? Stand back, my friends. I wouldn't want anyone to get hurt, <laughs> needlessly. Um, so is this just like hack and slash with my sword, or what are we doing here? So I unlocked it. Uh, it yeah. Uh, it, uh, oh, I see. It's. I think it's defy danger. There is a danger um, that uh, Kimbo has not bothered to tell you about. Um, is this by powering through or by enduring? Um, Could be by the death quick feet. I think it's probably it's probably going to be powering through. Okay. That is plus one. Wow, I just got snake eyes. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah, you know what? You opened that door just fine, but that door was like the last little bit of support on the oh. section of wall. Wait, no, I didn't. Ah. Yeah, I, I got to say. Check. Yeah, the dice are weird. Uh, oh, I got yeah. <clears throat> Plus uh, strength is a seven, so at least it's not a complete failure. Okay. This is where I need to actually look at the basic moves. Because I can never remember if Defy Danger is the one that like has the... Which options it has. Um, yeah, it says Hard Bargain or... Ah, uh, that's Worst right. Outcome, Hard Bargain, or Ugly Choice. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you kick that door down. It opens pretty easily, seeing how it was unlocked. It's surprisingly easy. Um, there's no, like breaking sound on that side of the door at all uh but like as you walk in that tree just like shifts a little bit and rolls it just just a tiny bit and then just slides down uh and part of it like just crumbles that section of wall and there is debris falling everywhere including on your friends behind you. Uh, so, um, Kimbo, you're standing right there because you like directed him to do this. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we'll do six. Absolutely. Uh, I think I got two sixes. Okay. It is cool. easy to interpret, but yes. Wait, you get two sixes? I think so. Okay. Uh, yeah, you do, you do not take 12 points of damage. It just takes six plus, minus whatever your armor is. Okay. Um, yeah. You, you, that, that did not work out quite the way you planned. Uh, but there's a big hole in the wall. You don't really need a door anymore. So everybody can just walk right in. I think that's exactly what Bolton will say. You don't exactly need a door anymore. So... Okay. You just climb over the rubble and find yourself in this uh, little storeroom at the base of the stairs that, you know, used to go up to the belfry. And uh, there are there are doors that are not. Well, OK, so there's a do there is a locked door and there's an unlocked door. <laughs> Aside from the one you just came through. The unlocked door is definitely is probably the safest one, I think. I mean, why would you lock interior doors in a temple? Yeah, I mean, if it's unlocked, then it must just be a normal room. Yeah. Right, everybody? That sounds plausible. Sounds logical. Sure. So you, everybody go that way? Yep. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, yeah, you walk through it and you find yourself in it. This is like this is like the foyer, you know, the, the where if you had come in the front door, you would be in this space. Um, and uh, who is in the lead? 
well, I think uh, Lucian probably just walked straight in because he, he, he thought it was going to be so safe. <laughs> yeah, Lucian, um, something comes flying through the air, hits the wall next to your head and just like breaks. And you look in this like pieces of this, you know, uh, urn fall to the ground. It wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't break it. Uh, look across the room. Do we see anything? Um, no, that's the funny thing. You don't see anything. Uh, you do hear uh, what sounded like the wind at first, but then, you know, if you think about it, the air is not moving in here. And it wasn't windy outside. But there's just kind of this high, like, sound of wind moving through stuff. And I've got a, uh, a special a particle, a special particle. Uh, yep, you do. This is quick. do I suspect that this is a like a ghost or a wraith or a... yeah I mean you've been told there's a ghost here and that's why they don't use this temple anymore so you know you don't necessarily know what the ghost does and like why people are afraid of it but you know yeah I don't think it's any question that that's what's what threw that at you so what what is so I'm going to use my bardic lore. What is ne what do I know is needed to? Um, I've had a complete brain fart on the English language. D diffuse, disperse a ghost. What's their word? Banish. Thank you. Uh, yeah, banish, exercise. Yeah. Uh, you know. Better than the ones that were coming into my head is better than the ones coming into my head. I think they're looking for the word buff. Yeah. So. Ghosts are generally they're hanging around because they're they have unfinished business or they're protecting something or they're bound to a particular place uh, by some kind of spell. So uh, yeah, you you can either finish whatever its, its business is. You you probably like because it's always in this temple, uh, protecting this place is probably the closest thing or bound to this place. All right. Um, unless anybody has anything, I'm going to hop in and, and say something to the ghost then. Uh, hey, hey, we're just here to help you out. Why would you throw that at me? Do you, do you always hurt people that, that try to help you? There's a little table in the corner, you know, and has like some kind of, it's hard to tell what it is. It's made out of brass. Uh, that thing just lifts up on its own from the table and comes flying at you again. Uh, and you, I'm guessing Dex would be the appropriate uh, st uh, stat to get out of the way, unless you have another idea. If you want to use something else, so that's cool. That sounds about right. So let's... Uh, six. Could use some help getting uh, sliding away. Yeah. What did what did, what did the other three who are seeing uh, things flying at you do? Somebody could. I'll definitely me. help. Yeah. Um. I th I think what I'll do is I'll try and uh, use my sword and just try and hit it in midair. Okay. As cool. It's flying towards. Me. Yeah. Or even my shield. I've got a shield. I'll use that. I'll jump in front of it. Um, yeah, Corn's going to be jealous because you're you're getting to hit the ghost first. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, well, okay. So so this could be uh, defend, or are are you trying to hurt it, or are you just trying to get in the way so it doesn't uh, keep hitting Lucian with stuff? I think he was helping. I don't. Is that right? Oh, helping. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, okay. Oh, so, yeah. So there aren't any bonds. Um, so to help just roll with whatever stat you would use for that action. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that would be, in, in my case, it would be Dex, I believe. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll submit that. Ha! Uh, four. Sorry. We are on a roll. Yeah. XP! XP! <laughs> yep. Uh, you're, you're getting all kinds of XP. And um, yeah, this is... Uh, you all are... are. Uh, have you worked together before? Or is this like your first group ghost busting attempt? It does not, it does not appear that we have. 
Okay. <laughs> um, well, this is, you know, it's, it, you, you got to start somewhere. And uh, you all decided to start with a poltergeist, so cool. Um, and yeah, so you you not only don't block it, I think what happens is that um, the your shield just like gets wrenched out of your hands and takes off like a, I don't know what, what shape it is. If it's round, I'm picturing like a frisbee going through the air. <laughs> And just kind of flies and crashes against the the opposite wall. So you do not have a shield at the moment, and also you didn't. Uh, uh, also, um, I will get these names right sooner or later. I'm having to keep scrolling up and down and see everyone's names, or move the windows out of the way. Uh, okay, so yeah, Lucian, um, roll a d6. I think that's what we're doing for just things, blunt objects flying through the air. Let that down. Two. Cool. That's a lot better than the six that uh, Kimbo got last time. So cool. Um, do you have any armor? This definitely does does not ignore armor. This is a blunt object. No, I I uh, I'm wearing these nice clothes. They 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 protect me. Um, right. From looking bad. Right. Yes, they, they they protect you in social situations, you know, uh, but not so much against uh, weird brass boxes hitting you. Uh, so yeah, you take that two points of damage, um, and I have it has been called to my attention that it's nine, um, and uh, if yeah, if we take we take a five minute break and um, maybe I don't know. Think about uh, if you have any plans for dealing with poltergeists, or if you just want to like plow through and hit it with a sword a lot. Hey, Bethany. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt for this, but I've got a session start move. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you ask me something about my homeland, why I left, or what I left behind, I can earn experience. Okay. Cool. I will. As soon as everyone gets back, I will ask that. Cool. Every time I've run this, there's been a barbarian, and every time I have forgotten that move. That's and usually fair. so have they, so that's the problem. So I'm glad you didn't. I am back. Okay, cool. Everyone's back then. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, Patrick reminded me that uh, he has a start of session move that uh, I had completely forgotten about as the barbarian. Yeah. So I guess the the very general question is um is your your homeland uh did you come a long way from here or is this like kind of the same general part of the world as your homeland? Uh I've traveled quite extensively. Uh I go home every once in a while to see the folks uh and I'm on my way back out. Um, I left my homeland because it's very cold and very unpleasant, and we just don't really go in for the creature comfort so much as the civilized folk. Um, and I, I dig the creature comforts; they're they're they really speak to my appetites. So, you know, I just kind of like I go home every once in a while and shower them with gold, which they don't really need, but it's the whole, you know, that's the thing you're supposed to do if you're the erstwhile child. So, <clears throat> so you yeah. were off in the big city and you're crossing the mountains on your way home. And you are currently in a town that probably reminds you of your homeland quite a bit. It's, it's cold, it's snowy, it's unpleasant. Uh, you know, the, during the day it's slush and mud at night or when it's cooler, it's ice. Uh, and the air is full of smoke because it's in this kind of bowl-shaped valley that just traps the smog from the, the there's a factory kind of at the end of the lake. Um, and yeah, also the, it, there was a blizzard a few days ago and the passes are still blocked. So this is, this is just like home. 
Yeah, I was hoping to get through here and get back to see the folks because we generally just kind of spend the winter hanging out in a nice heated yurt, and that's actually pretty comfortable. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but instead, I got stuck here. Uh, heated yurt sounds a lot more pleasant than this big echoey temple, even without the ghost. Uh, speaking of which, there's a ghost. And it's making this kind of a high-pitched wind wailing sound, and you can kind of tell the direction now, at least. That's good. Uh, it's kind of up near the ceiling, like where the ceiling meets the wall, that, that corner. Um, mm. And if you look at it, you can see like a little bit of shimmering in the air. So you can kind of tell where it is. Okay. Um, yeah, I will... Um... Uh, I chose as one of my features for my signature weapon. Uh, glows in the presence of undead. It's glowing. Uh, it's glowing. Um, oh, it's glowing. Can I use that to, to sort of like figure out where a good location would be to sort of like strike if it's too hard to sort of figure out normally? Or um, hmm. sounds like you can already tell the location of it pretty much. So yeah, you know, in this, in this case, you through. can. I'm trying. Uh, I mean, it would glow brighter. The bright he got. To the yeah, bright. like I so, mean, if you had it actually stuck in something undead, it would be, you know, incredibly bright. Um, I'm not sure how, like, how well you can zero in on exactly where it would be, but like, if you're in the same room, it's going to glow. Sure. Well, but, I am uh, going to try and figure out where it is and just sort of get close. You said, was it up high? You said? Yeah, it's up like oh. kind of near the top of the ceiling, which is not ridiculously high it's um you know uh not kimbo uh corin could probably stab it with a sword mm. um but you are you're a halfling so i don't think you can reach it i can jump i'm gonna jump and try jump. and swing it up yeah sure go for it um hmm yeah just do hack and slash if you fail i think we know why you failed Sorry, that's a seven. Seven, awesome. Yeah, you clip it like you 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 jump, and at the very top, you can kind of you feel something like slow down your sword, and it does get very bright all of a sudden, like a flare. And this, you're in this kind of dim uh, room, and like it lights up the room like sunlight for just an instant, uh, but you don't just like don't finish your leap like you should it's almost like you stop in midair and oh. Oh, no. you feel just very cold all of a sudden and then you are flying right at uh corin uh, uh what do you do corin uh i'm gonna try to catch him all right um yeah i uh, defy danger um dex i guess all right that is also plus one i can do that uh ooh, uh 11. yeah you catch him like <clears throat> cool uh that that sword does not stab you um it uh in fact you can like uh you, you can, can you can you Oh, go ahead, sorry. So can he, like, catch me and sort of ready me for a throwback? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that is what that 11, yes. That's, that is the, the extra bonus of getting a 10 plus there. He catches you in a way that, like, he can just, like, catch you and you're <laughs> right back. Uh, should I roll for that as well? Yeah, uh, I guess that's volley. Volley, oh, dear. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sure. You only have one ammo, but... All right. For Volley, I roll a nine. Uh, um, I'll, I'll hold him by... Um... Sorry. Well, I can't take several shots. Uh... 
All right. Uh, in order to do this, I have to move to get the shot placing, um, placing me in the danger of your choice. Okay. Yeah, that that makes sense. You know, you you caught him, but like you would have to throw him over uh, uh, Kimbo to, or not Kimbo, uh, Lucian to, and that's probably a bad idea. So you like have to move around, Lucian, and there you go. Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, go ahead and roll your damage. I guess this is kind of odd, like, whose damage are we rolling here? But I think since you did the volley, um, uh, Corin, I guess you roll the damage. <laughs> All right, so that looks like a d10. Which reveals a five. Awesome. Uh, Cool. Uh, yeah, that sword glows very bright again. You know, it definitely like hits and again, there's like this pause at the top, but it's not the pause of something grabbing, uh, remember these names eventually Baldwin. It's, uh, it's like Baldwin's hanging from his sword for just an instant and then falls and you hear this unearthly shriek that it's it's like that wind sound but cranked up to 11. uh yeah what um kimba where are you you're are you like uh well i was definitely hanging back a little bit in the group uh you know i got stunned a bit when that masonry mm -hmm. fell on my head um i'm looking around for uh, anything uh, holy, uh, anything that might have some sort of divine. Holy, okay. Uh, on the ghost. Um, there's a, so there's a door. Are you still like in the storeroom? I can probably see it from where I am. Okay. But I'm, I'm definitely in the room with, with the other three. Okay. But I, yeah, like you can look back through the doorway you just came through and the other door across the on the other side of the storm, there's uh, there's a symbol painted on it, mm -hmm. and it looks it. vaguely religious. Are you are you religious? No, no. But like you know, it looks like the kind of thing that would be associated with the temple. Okay, um, I'll go and try and open that door. I think it's locked. Okay. That that's the locked one, yeah. But you have uh, tricks of the trade. Uh, that would be a failure. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think maybe I still open the door and there's just something very bad on the other side. Um, no, like as you're opening it, like you hear the click, but before you can actually open it, there's again an, a, a loud shriek and that ghost comes straight at you. And knocks you away from the door, and you feel like this icy cold go right through you. Uh, roll a d10. Three. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, yeah, you're you, you can shake it off, you know, that's uh, that hurt a lot and you don't want to go through it again but uh you're not like you know for, for for an instant you probably thought you were just gonna like freeze solid um but it, uh yeah i think it ignores armor it's insubstantial so the armor would unless your armor is like blessed or something cows are holy but otherwise ordinary leather yeah okay uh, yeah, yeah, that, uh, that ghost does not want you to go in this door. Uh, is the ghost, did it pass through into that room? Uh, yeah, yeah. I turn around and I say, guys, it's in here. So Baldwin's got a bolt. It's unlocked, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, Baldwin is pissed, so he's going to go, uh, chasing after it now with his sword out. Oh, but I think he'll collect his shield first. It's just sort of That's in a room somewhere. Yeah. 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 It's just on the floor. Um, you can, nothing stops you from getting it now. Is 
So yeah. Cool. Yeah, you just go charging after it. Um, yeah. Store opens no problem, uh, and just as you walk through it, you run right through what again? It's like this ice cold air, uh, and you just run right through it. Um, and I think, um, hmm. Roll a d10, but subtract two from whatever the... Um, does armor negate this? Is this affected by armor? Mm -hmm. uh, no, but it is affected by the fact that you were moving so fast and you were kind of in control of your own movements here. So it's three. Three damage. Okay, yeah, subtract two from that. Oh, no, sorry. It rolled five, so yes, it's three oh, damage. Oh, okay. Now. Okay, cool. Uh, so as soon as that happens, though, I will start swinging about wildly and just sort of Try and calm the air up. <laughs> Your sword is glowing, and it's it is like it's catching on something, almost like if you were swinging through water. Uh, yeah. And there's like this. It's it's almost like you're in very cold water too. Like you're in the middle of a whirlwind, and it's you're being pushed and battered from all sides, and it's screaming, and like you you feel. It's it's like it's as if someone is trying to punch you with water. <laughs> uh, okay. And you're you can't go like like your like your feet will move. You're not glued to the floor, but like the the wind just like keeps coming around from different directions, and huh. so you're tr kind of trapped right here in the doorway. Uh, yeah. Um. Go. Uh, everyone sees this. Um, Baldwin is fighting something <laughs> Fight, fighting the air with a very brightly glowing sword should i roll that uh let's see did you, you yeah, i'm trying to fight oh yeah go ahead and roll yet, no. that's right yeah aha this is better uh it's a nine cool does anyone want to help yeah if someone helps that'd be great yeah, I'm picturing myself like stabbing over his head into the air. Because um, I'm so short, too. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, seven, eight. Cool. So yeah. that's the one. Ten. So that's a 10 then. Nice. Yep. Go ahead and do your damage. Uh, yes, what is the damage? Hold on. Damage is D10. I'll just roll this one again. Uh, seven. Yes, yeah, seven. Awesome. Um, okay, I wrote down what you did the last time. Uh, yeah. You, you hear another, like, and it, it, honestly, it hurts more than that cold air hitting you. There's like, it's like someone just stabbed you right in the ears. Um, but then it just sort of pulls away and you see a fog kind of raise up and like disappear into the ceiling of the building. Um, yeah, what do you do? Told you guys it was safe in here. Uh, I step into the room. Cool. Um, marked with the sign on the door. Yeah. So this is a. It's like a. You know, the, it's the priest's living quarters. You know, you can see there's a bed and there's like a wash basin. Um, it's you know, it's it's where the priest slept at night. Uh, there are. There's like a. What's the what's the word for that? Like a tall closety thing that isn't built into the building. <laughs> I'm having the English like wardrobe. wardrobe. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> There's a wardrobe um, against the wall. Uh, you can you can definitely toss the place if you want. Doesn't look like a lot of people have been in here. You know, it's it's not been looted, or if it has, it's been looted by the world's neatest looters. I, I get to search. All right. Um, let's see here. What would you? You don't have to, uh, you know, if you if you look long enough, you're going to find stuff. Um, yeah, you find in the bottom of this 
wardrobe underneath like uh what looks like it, it's, it's almost a false floor but it's not it's not really hidden it's just kind of a, there um but you find two flat copper discs they're like the size of dinner plates and about that general shape they're just like smooth, hammered copper. No symbols. Um, no. Is the symbols of them? Uh, no, no symbols on them at all. I meant like the instrument. Um, I, uh, I, I show them to the other. Anyone? Any inkling? Uh, yeah. If anyone wants to um, uh, spout lore on this, you're welcome to. I will do that. Cool, cool. We'll spout some more. Seven, eight. Right, it's to intelligence. Eight. Eight, okay. Um, I have to tell you something interesting, but not necessarily useful, right? Uh, There is this whole region um, is used to be um, used to be very like modern and advanced, and this this town in particular, they were very proud of their like they had this you know like a real sewer system, and uh, there was a railroad that crossed the mountains and like came through the center of town, and there's not anymore uh, because the main city in this region, which is a bit to the north, kind of at the end of this mountain range, uh, it was, you know, the the most technologically advanced and the most magically advanced. It had, you know, two different wizard colleges. Uh, they developed a lot of things, a lot of artifacts that are still kind of for sale around um and you've heard that uh, that jawbone is a good place to get those they're still like advertised in the market and some of them are real some of them aren't uh but they definitely had a penchant for this like smooth copper covered things like most of their magical items were covered with co or, or, or either solid copper or covered with like a layer of copper uh they was, are supposed to conduct magical energy. Well, well, well. What an interesting thing for a priest to have. Yeah. I'll pass on what I, I suspect about uh, these two discs. Uh, the other thing you know about that city is that uh, it it is all undead. Um, as far as you know, there's no living people there anymore. That's That was kind of the center of a something bad happened and nobody really is terribly clear on what but uh the effects have kind of radiated out through the whole area uh -huh. so this might be the epicenter of the uh the undead outbreak these might be from there hmm. interesting um anybody else want to do anything I suspect we, I, I suggest we just keep uh, checking out the, these rooms. Uh, none of them have been too dangerous yeah. so far. No, no danger at all. Um, are the priest's clothes still scattered around? Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, that, that wardrobe that you found these discs in uh, was full of clothes. Um, are they my size? Um, do your... Uh, Average build. You're, oh, you're human, right? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Yep. Okay. I put, I put them on. And and this this sect tends toward brightly colored, uh, like sometimes eye hurtingly bright com color combinations. Uh, so you you find several very brightly colored robes, like you know, bright glowing pinkish purple and yellow and orange. Kimbo, you're uh, looking great. Thank what you. an excellent look for you, my friend. I am making it work. Aren't there <laughs> any? No one will see you coming. Uh, are there any hymns that are associated with this priesthood? Um, or, or any hymns 
uh, yeah, yeah, they definitely have songs. Um, they they worship. Um, there's it, it's the sun god. There are two kind of two aspects of the sun god, and this temple from uh, you know there, there are paintings on the wall depicting things. And you can kind of see that like uh, this is the this is the sun god who uh, provides light and warmth to the world and grows crops. And there's you know all kinds of pictures of like fruit and wheat and uh, there are the all the windows are kind of up. Uh, you know, pretty close to where that ghost was, kind of just like up where the the wall meets the ceiling, um, but they're angled in to like let sunlight in, uh, and they're all uh, kind of a yellow glass. Uh, but yeah, you know songs about the sun god. Okay, uh, I uh, wink knowingly. They all definitely know what I'm about to do, and start singing one of the more famous ones and walk through the, the hallway in a okay. uh, bid to. Uh, attract the attention of the poltergeist, maybe in a bar. Yeah, you don't. Nothing happens aside from like you know, it's uh it's it echoes a bit because this is you know a big semi-empty building, and uh, um, you know, it probably is uh, kind of a pleasant, cheery hymn because you know, uh, happy sunlight fertility harvest god um and uh yeah but you don't nothing nothing comes flying at you nothing happens can i hear someone else singing you can hear i don't know almost like there's an echo and it sounds like an echo of your voice but if you listen it's it's delayed a little extra like like for the the distance the walls are from you, it shouldn't. Like there should just barely be an echo. It's it's almost like you're you're singing inside a, a cavern or a. Uh, uh... Scott, your your English affliction has hit me. Um... I know it's spread. I'm so sorry. <laughs> a canyon. There we go. Uh, like it's bouncing off walls that are much further away. All right, I turn to the rest of them after concluding my song, and I say, boys. I think this place might be haunted. Well, that remains to be proven. <laughs> Corin just bursts out. <laughs> That's an excellent one. And slaps you on the shoulder in an entirely uh, too rough way. Yeah, but you come into the kind of, I guess, the, the, the area where the worshipers gather. Um, there are benches kind of arranged in like a semicircle. And there's an altar kind of and also also like a semicircle you know extending from the, the the far wall uh and then there's like the like the sacrificial type altar or um on top of that and there's like a, a brass uh bowl on top and um i mean it's it's very empty there is uh there were like some nice sculptures and faces they're all now like just shards against the or you know, on on the floor uh where they have been thrown at people so um unless someone does uh is doing anything else i think uh baldwin is going to be doing the using his his sword as a divining rod again and just trying to sort of okay holding it out in front of him just seeing if there's any change in the brightness of the light um you do notice it, it is still glowing, mm -hmm. uh, fainter, much fainter, but it is like there's definitely a glow to it. And as you wave it, it's it's not back and forth so much as it's up and down. Mm -hmm. And as the point go, lowers toward the floor, it flares up a little. And then if you raise it up, it goes dim again. It's not it's not a huge change, like but you notice it. You've had the sword long enough to, to mm -hmm. you know, calibrate your. Uh, um, my expectations, yeah, yes, absolutely. Exactly. There we sure. go. I think your sword seems to be able to detect which way is down. Yeah, yeah. Your sword knows which way is down. The the sword detects undead, so there's undead down there, but not. It's not. It's not that it's. Never mind. 
So, uh, I mean, uh, 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 what, uh, 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 sure. Okay. You solve every problem with that sword of yours. I take a few steps forward and stomp on the ground right in front of him. Uh, cool. <laughs> Did I get it? Uh, um, I mean, it's, it's, so it's still uh, going. It's, you know, uh, tiled with like thin stone. Um, I think you, th there is like a little crack that forms on it. And I, I think you do hear like, it doesn't sound like solid ground underneath it. There's, there's just like a little bit hollow sound. The fiends, they must be below us. Clever. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna search the room trying to find like uh, the, the hidden, assuming there's a hidden stairway or something down there. Yeah. Um, if you're searching, you see, there's, you can't see any hidden, hidden stairways like immediately, but you do notice that, uh, there are some kind of two parallel scrape marks at either end of the altar on the on this like stone uh, surface. So um, I'm going to get on the opposite side of where those scrape marks are, and I'm just gonna try and push. Hold okay. On, hold on. Let me get on the opposite side. We'll both push together. You go on that side. I'll get on this side. We both push. <laughs> Does that sound like a good plan? No. And I'm just going <laughs> to do with one big push. Just uh, yeah. Can. You have Ben Barr's lift gates, right? That's a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's do the roll. Uh, Kimbo, what are you doing? Well, well, it does this. This seems like a thing that you might be interested in. So that's nine. If um, Kimbo's quick enough, or rather, if if Corin's quick enough, anyone can help really. But yeah, if um, can push that to a ten, that'd be really yeah. good. I can I can jump ahead and this for sure. Um, that be strength. Um, it depends on how you do it. Yeah, so you're used doing? to breaking into things, and so like you might. I don't know. You you might have other ways to do this. Maybe maybe if you check the grooves, like the slat on the floor, and you remove uh, uh, some debris or something that might be in the way, that might be um, using a different stat. Yeah, um, I think uh, I just um, grab something nearby that I can use uh, as a lever. Okay. Um, and just try to you know. Shift it up while he pushes it out, um, oh. and through the complicated application of something, you use intelligence. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll. Uh, that is a mix. Okay. So, so it's a nine. Cool, cool. Um, yeah. Well, cool. you find you find a lever, no problem. There's a. It looks like just a long, narrow splinter like you know part of a splintered board or something at first and you pick it up and you realize it's a it's like a wooden training sword like people would use to to spar against friends they didn't want to kill uh but it's you know it looks like it's been here for a while but it's still solid enough to use as a lever and you get it down there and you like push it into the groove you start like pushing along and you hear a crack and that altar slides aside uh as um baldwin is like pushing it or i guess i guess baldwin's pulling it and you're pushing it something like that anyway uh but um baldwin man you are in the way for a lot of things here <laughs> there's a spark um oh a bluish color that comes up from one of those grooves and then the whole altar is just covered with this like crackling like sparks and electricity or something and I see. Uh, um roll uh let's see what would that be um roll a d8 
And depending on your armor, subtract your armor. If it's not metal, you can subtract your armor. Relevant with one. So um, I have two sources of armor. I have both my shield and my scale mail. Um, uh, okay. Mm, both metal, right? Yeah. So let's yeah, say. Okay. So just take one. Yeah, you take the one damage. Uh, yeah, it's just like. It's. You feel this energy just like push through you, but it also pushes you back away from it. Mm. And you're not holding on that tightly, so you're not like caught and, you know, held while it finishes zapping you. You are just cool. thrown back away from it. And as you like look at it, that sort of lightning pattern uh you can see like burn marks where it was um just on the surface but it like the glowing disappears uh -huh. uh, and um let's see uh kimbo i think you're fine because you were using this wooden lever you weren't touching it with directly or with anything metal so you're good are there stairs or anything leading downward uh, once the altar's moved? Uh, yeah, it slides aside, and there's a ladder leading down into this trap door. I guess it's not really a trap door. There's no door. It's just a hole. And the altar, the blue glow thing, went away? Yeah. Yeah, it was just for an instant. Probably got some static electricity. Um, make, make sure next time that you touch something metal. Oh. Uh, <laughs> It can happen. You just kind of zapped yourself. It happens to me all the time. This is what happens to my hair. It's, it's why it's like this. Just trying to help. Thanks. No worries. There's a hole in the ground and a ladder leading down into it. <laughs> Does any of you want to go? Who wants to jump down there with me? Baldwin, you're starting to Hello. Let's do it. <laughs> Off to you, gentlemen. Please, let me go first. I can cushion your fall. Oh, well, after you then. So uh, can we see how far down it is? Like, can I actually jump safely? You, yeah, yeah, I think you can. It's not, it's, it's like maybe eight feet from you know the, the floor that you're standing on to the floor below and you can see it like there's enough light that you can see directly below at least sure Whoop, thump. yeah you land no problem uh and i'll jump right after him and hopefully land on him because he's going to cushion my phone there you go <laughs> all right <laughs> uh yeah and you land and you look around and you know it's it was dim upstairs but like now it's it's even dimmer and you can see a little bit in that light that comes down you know through the hole but not much just enough to see that like there are shadows in this room that are not cast by anything like there just shouldn't be shadows where there are and they're moving I shoved down the hole. Uh, what's, the, what's the deal down there? What's there? Uh, it's just a, you know, like it's like your average um, scary shadow filled basement in a church. Uh, and it's dark and the shadows are moving, but they're probably nothing. We're probably safe. I'm going to go check them out. Do you mind if I, I do you want to go first, uh, Corin, or do you, I, I would like to go. I like. attack the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had to say it. All right. Um, I mean, if the most, I'm probably just going to go swing at it and see what happens. Yeah. Go for it. All um, right. You can see, like, the moving shadows. Uh, wow. How does the 12 sound? Uh, the 12 sounds pretty good. Um, in spite of the fact that these shadows are, like, on the ball where shadows would be, um, you like take a swing at it and that it like goes and like your your sword would get like it should get stuck in that wall um or you know like bounce off of it if it were hard enough but it's this kind of soft like mud stone and it like takes a big chip out of the wall and in doing so it takes a big chip out of the shadow 
Excellent. And the shadow is not moving anymore. And you can see, like, it's, it's, it's like a, it's not quite like a black paper cutout, but it's roughly human sized and roughly human shaped. And it's just still, it's like you pinned it there against the wall. I'm kind of it's picturing Peter Pan's it. shadow. Huh? I'm kind of picturing Peter Pan's shadow. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> ha, like that, fellow beast. Yeah. Looks like you captured the darkness there, Corin. Well done. Um, but the other walls, there's, so you can see a doorway ahead of you. It's, there's, there's no, like, there's no door in it. You can just see that it's open. Uh, but the other walls in the room around you, like, you can still see some shifting. And it's, like, if you look directly at it, you don't see anything moving, but you could swear there are definitely things like shadows or the wall itself, something is moving just out of the corner of your eye. So I think at this point, um, Baldwin will have climbed down the ladder by now. He'll, he'll start climbing down and we'll have reached the bottom. Um, the, the light of the sword, is that giving the extra sort of... Um, uh, yeah, that would... That would do something. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it shedding any light on the situation at all? Uh, to be a little too literal. Um, uh, yeah. The, well, I mean, it's glowing. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's glowing. All right. Well, I think um, what I'll do is I'll just do the same thing and just swipe that uh, one of the shadows as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it, it glows brighter as you get close to it. Like it's, this is definitely something. It's not just. It, who knows what, well, I was going to say, it's not just nothing, but it's obviously not just nothing, it's moving. Um, it is definitely undead, and it is it is a thing that your sword doesn't like. So before, I before, before you swing, uh, if I may, yeah. uh, I'm going to cheer you on by playing on my lute a song by um, local minstrel favorite, Ghostface Killa, um, and hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully that will help me improve the damage you are able to do to uh, the, whatever that might be, that shadow thing that you're attacking. Cool. All right. Let's do it. Yep. Uh, oh, yes, that is, that is a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, no, 13. 13, yeah. So, yeah. Do your oh, damage. Yeah. My damage is going to be, it's a D10, right? Yeah, one's my D10. Get a D10 and a plus 1D4. Oh, and a 1D4 as well. One's my damage. Oh, well, okay. So that's a total of 10. Yeah, that's a total of 10. Yeah. You do the same. Yeah, you do the same thing. You, like... Just stab it. And your sword, again, it's this kind of, it's not quite dirt, but it's not quite stone. Uh, mm -hmm. And your sword just, like, goes straight into it and, like, sticks there. And you can see, like, the shadow shrinking away from it. Like, there's a hole, and then it kind of, uh, kind of, like, opens up, and it shrinks, and it, like, moves sideways, and it slips away from the blade. But then it's just stops moving as soon as it like gets completely um Ooh. so that the blade is outside of it interesting uh, does it, it so it's it kind of removes itself from his sword or it's yeah somehow attached and um it's like you know like the sword kind of pins it to the wall uh and it it kind of just slides like uh i don't know if you, feel, if you try to stab an amoeba um <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. It could just okay. kind of ooze away and then reform, and that's what the shadow has done. But it it stopped moving, but it's also kind of like reformed. There's no big hole in it. Uh, I see. Right. So it's not. It's obviously not dead yet. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Kimbo, are you still at the top? I think that I'm. I'm making my way down the ladder at this point. Okay. Uh, and there's some besides. The, the top of the hole and the light from the sword. There's no source of light back there. Um, no, just like the yeah, the the hole above and the sword are about it. 
um, I'll try um, nailing one of the shadows with a throwing dagger as I uh, descend. As you descend? Okay. Uh, you're in a pretty precarious position there, so, uh, but, um, yeah. Do a volley. Um, I believe I got a 12. Making up for all these bad rolls earlier, huh? I, it's just so hard to, to, to read this. I think four and a six over my two okay. most reads. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Uh, do your damage. Uh, seven. Cool. Um, this is the one that, uh, uh, I don't remember those names, um, the bald one hit earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, your dagger kind of sticks in the wall too. It just like, just barely. Um, but what happens is that that shadow again, sort of like opens up and like starts to ooze away and then just stops with this big hole in its center around your dagger and then just like kind of fades into the wall and so there's just still one mass shadow mass thing um it has it has like uh slid again they, they haven't none of them have come completely off the wall this one looks a little bit like it's going to like it's like you can see some relief to it. It's not flat, uh, but then it just kind of slides around through that doorway ahead of you into the other room. Uh, and um, Baldwin, your sword—it's it, still glowing a bit, but it's not—it's not like red alert glowing. Mm. So, um, because when we got down here, so there's just. We're down here. There's one door that it kind of went through. Is there any yeah. other? Any other um, no, nope. all you can see is this doorway ahead of you. Okay. And you can't really see what's beyond it. You do uh -huh. have uh, torches and stuff in your. Um, if you have, if any of you have adventuring gear, which I assume someone does, yeah. Uh -huh. And you have a glowing sword, so you might not need them. Mm, yeah, I think Baldwin is going to sort of like ready up his shield and sword and and uh, cautiously peer into the next room and just sort of see what the situation is there. Okay, um, you know, like I said, you're you're pretty well calibrated to your sword. You know, the <laughs> distance that requires uh, to glow. It does start to glow a bit more the further you walk into that room. Does anyone have adventuring gear? Think Um, who yeah. does have adventuring gear? Thorin does. I do, and I'll pull one out and offer it to somebody, but I've got a two-handed sword, so... Uh, I'll take it. I'll, uh, cool. open the door. Here you are, friend. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Uh, and uh, I light the torch and uh, join him in the, uh, in the next room. So, you have just walked into this dark, echoing other room. Uh, you're carrying a torch and a glowing sword, and you can see that shadow was starting to like, starting to become, you know, three dimensional and come off the wall as it came around the doorway. And now you can see, like, in the light of this torch, it's standing there in apart from the wall, like just in the in the room. And it's holding um I mean it it's a sword made of just shadow. Um uh, and it's just kind of like looks, you know, it's it's in kind of a defensive stance. Like it's just waiting to see what you do. I'd like to take a step forward and say, come at me, bro. <laughs> All right. And you I have, have a, yeah, I have a move for this. Mm -hmm. What are you waiting for? Um, challenge to your enemies, roll plus con. So that's a 13. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I hold, no, I don't. 
On a 10+, plus, they treat you as the most obvious threat to be dealt with and ignore your companions, take plus two damage ongoing against them. Magnificent. You are definitely the biggest threat, and uh, you say, come at me, bro, and it does. Um, it just comes straight at you like that sword uh, held almost like, a, almost like a spear. It might be a spear. I mean, it's it's made of just, you know, darkness, so who knows, but um, yeah. Uh, roll your hack and slash. Sure. Uh, 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 seven plus one is eight. Cool, cool. Uh, go ahead and do your damage. And we'll see uh, so I deal my damage, which is the d10. Uh, six plus one for the sword, plus two for the come at me. So, um, <clears throat> I should be able to do that math. Nine. Nine. Yeah, okay. Um... Almost the same thing happens that did, you know, on the wall. Your sword goes right through it without, I mean, it's like, it's not quite like air. It's more like water, you know, it's a little bit thicker than air. Uh, but, and you like, it freezes for just a moment and then like kind of opens up around your sword. Like it's got this big expanding hole and then it just like steps sideways off of your sword and brings down that shadow sword Ooh. right at you. And um, roll a, what the hell is it? Roll a d6 plus one. D6 plus one. Uh, three. Uh, cool, yeah. Um, this, uh, you can subtract your armor from it. Mm -hmm. So, so that's two damage. Not bad. Not nearly as bad as you did to it. No. Um, but yeah, uh, the rest of you see this happening. Uh, I rush forward with the uh, with the torch and attempt to basically stab it in the chest with the brand. All right. Yeah. Uh, hack and slash. Uh, failure. Oh no. Uh, what did you get? Go ahead. He's got his failure. Do that first, and then I'll ask questions. You like thrust your torch at it, and the torch goes out. And there's this fizzle and smoke as if you had just, you know, doused it in water. Uh, I uh, start to backpedal if possible. Okay. Yeah. I, I do not blame you for that. Um, uh, what were you going to do, Scott? I was just going to, uh, I was going to ask you, uh, is there anything in particular I know about this, this kind of undead, this shade like um, being? It's it is drawn to light to put it out. It likes it is a source of darkness, but it also likes darkness. Darkness is home to it. Uh, it it sees light as like an invasion. Okay. Um, all right, that's good to know. Um, um, had uh, uh, Kim or not Kimbo? Had Corin not like stepped forward and become an immediate threat, uh, that glowing sword would have drawn it right to it. Uh, yeah, so I think Baldwin's going to sort of uh, duck and roll in front of, uh, in between uh, Kimbo and, and the Shadow thing and just sort of stand ready to defend in case it it tries to get at the rest of the party. Yeah, uh, what role is that for defending? I think it's Con? So, yeah, roll plus Con, yeah. And that is a 10. Cool. So three uh, hold. Three hold, yes. Um yeah, I think I think what what really like what really works here is that it is just like it was attacking Corin, but then it it turns and it just like it's mesmerized by your sword and it's like following it with its sword. Um, and Kimbo, you have an opening here. You could you don't even have to hack and slash because it's distracted. Um, or not Kimbo, uh, Corin. Well, Kimbo, if if you're close enough. Though. No, I think I'm still backpedaling. Uh, okay. And trying to reignite the torch. Ah, right, right, right. But uh, yeah, Corin, you're standing right there. Okay, you want me to just roll damage, or um, I, if that's what you're doing, uh, if you're doing something else, then 
I mean, if it's if it's uh, mesmerized and looking away from me, I'm probably yeah. So you do have a chance here to just like yeah, just stab it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> wow. Okay. Ten, uh, eleven, counting my sword. I don't think I get the plus two because it's distracted by me anymore, right? Uh, right. Okay. I, you don't so need it. No, you yeah. don't need it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like watching that glow, and it's like following it with its sword, ready to like do something. It doesn't, you know, who knows what. And you just like take and swipe right through it, and it doesn't even shrink away from it like it did with the dagger. It's just like vanishes. Uh, it, it's not a slow process of like having time to try to get away from it. It's just gone. And you are in this empty echoing room, but it's less dark than it was. Partly because you got the torch relit and partly because it doesn't have, uh, yeah. Um, my sword is how is that gone down in brightness? Yeah, it's gone down quite a bit. Like there's still a very faint glow, but it's you know that there's nothing in this room. Yeah. Um this is a pretty empty room, but against the far wall, there's a lot of boxes, crates, uh containers they look a lot of them are open a lot of them look sort of you know maybe broken um but some of them from what you can see are still closed or like like uh, hammered shut there we go that's the word what do you do uh the ones that are closed uh, uh, maybe let's pry one of them open and see what's inside okay um i guess as you do that you like so you have to reach over, you know, another open one. And like, as you do, you realize that that's a coffin that you're reaching over. But what you're reaching over to get is not a coffin. It's just like a crate. And you like kind of can lift it up over and uh, start yeah, prying things open. And um, they're not like huge boxes. Uh, the coffin is probably the biggest one. But you find, what do you find? Uh, as you go through all of these, you find um, 200 gold pieces, all with symbols uh, from what I think uh, you would know as uh, New Volteri, the, the ruined city. Um, and you also find a little black glass or obsidian figure. Uh, it's kind of small and squat and it can fit like in the palm of your hand uh it feels a little heavier than it should like it's kind of but it's not uh not ridiculously so and it has like a thin uh copper wire kind of wound around it like um embedded into the glass i'm gonna uh, ask kimbo if he's ever seen anything like that uh, I don't. Uh, I don't think that I have. But hmm. it. Uh, yeah, sure. If I can. Um, uh, so you try to it more. Maybe you. Maybe you've heard of it somewhere. Uh, that's going to be a uh, thirteen. You've heard of it somewhere. <laughs> um, hmm. This is. This is probably what your boss suspected was down here. The cursed um, thing. Yeah, I mean, if your boss is like a you know, a mobster, he's certainly been in like the the, uh, the black market trade of artifacts from New Valtteri. Um This is what he was hoping was down here. This is also what was, you know, cursing the building and um, reviving all the undead. Um, so that's maybe a problem. Uh, it's very valuable to the right person. But, what? Okay. Sorry, go. Yeah. Oh, I'm just, uh, you know, whether you want the person that it's valuable to to have it or not is another question. Yeah, my, 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 my two questions that I may need to roll for this are um, what is, uh, what's a mighty one I offering me for this? And do I think that that's a fair price? Um, what would he offer you? For? Uh, well, 
So I guess here's a here's a question: Do you owe him anything? Oh well, yeah, I guess we, we discussed at the beginning that I, I, I messed up. Right, that's why you're working mind. for him. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. he is more than willing to wipe out any debts or like obligations you owe him in return for getting this thing. All right. What about us, though? I mean, it's, you're thinking about. You just find a bunch of gold. Ah, the gold mm. is cursed. But we can... uh, you know, for for this town currently, you're you're rich. Uh, you know, this is this is not like more money than you could ever spend. But this is uh, this is more money than most people see in you know months and months. Oh, I can spend it. Don't you? Yeah, you can spend it. Yeah, I was say it's pretty easy to spend it. I was going to say it's more than you can spend. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. But uh, it is true that like you you will be living considerably more pleasantly for the next uh, for the rest of the time you're in this town than you would otherwise. Yeah, if, and if we, uh, if we split this uh, evenly, uh, Corin, uh, I get sixty. Baldwin gets sixty. Kimbo gets sixty, and you get twenty. Now, hold right there. We can split it up. Or, I got a hot tip on a horse and a race that's coming up. <laughs> Guaranteed. Four to one. No risk. Four to one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My people do math very differently. Um, see, where I come from, one person who gets the treasure that he was down here for means that the 200 gets split three ways among the other three people. Oh, sounds good to me. I like that math better. Yeah, that sounds better. But who who was down here for the treasure? That would be you. I feel like we all yeah. were. That. I feel like I actually offered it to um, uh, pretty explicitly to uh, Baldwin. Uh, at least Baldwin to do with it. That's right. Baldwin did that. Was the uh, yeah? So I knew about this here. Okay, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I mean, we can. We could, we could, this, this could be, you know, fuck you money behind this. This could set me up in an entirely different town. If we could find the right buyer. I, I think. Mean, you uh, could always piss off a mob boss and sell it to someone else. That you could do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think you should do that. That sounds really good. We'll get so. No, 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 no. I think we, I think we should. Do no, 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 no. You're not <laughs> thinking this through. You're not thinking this through. What you really want to do is we tell them that we didn't okay. find anything. OK, but we keep the thing and then we let every other crime boss in the town know that you've got the thing and it's going to go to the open bidder. And then we all uh, keep the profits. We'll keep you safe. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Um, and then, and then we take your fire plan for getting rich. And then we take the money and we put it on the puppies. And then we buy all his people with the profits. <laughs> then what is he? If somebody else is paying his people, I think this plan will work. Okay. Got to go. So, with it. so it sounds like we're going to split the money evenly, and then we're go each going to take a share in with this little glass bottle and split the profits from that share. Yeah, I'm good with that. There's really only one other person in town who would have the money on hand to buy this thing, and would want it. You think? He might want it. Oh, that's you know, who who is who is local? Uh, I am. Okay, yeah, you would know. Um, yeah, yeah. Is, is anyone else? You would know certainly, like that that there there's like one other person who has the means and the interest in New Valtteri artifacts that you could take this to. Uh, his name is Victor Mullahan, mm. and he owns the factory. Yeah, I call him the Hedgehog. He's got more money than sense. Is, yep. is it because he looks so cute when he's all bundled up? No, it's because he's pregnant. Ah, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, we can put out discreet feelers. In the meantime, anyone know a way of finding anything else about this potentially powerful artifact that we have? Sure, let me take a closer look at it. I'm, I'm sure I can tell you uh, everything about it. I don't know if I'm physically holding it, but if I am, you now are. Yeah, are you just holding it? Um, I mean, you you do you do have good reason to believe that this thing has some kind of it, it radiates magical power of some kind. Uh, 
I don't know if you consider that a risk or not. I mean, not really. Okay. Magic's always seemed pretty safe in my book. Um, I take a look at it and I turn it around and I hand it back to Kimbo. I said, well, this was crafted uh, by the master craftsman Orlando uh, from New Volteri. And Orlando was really the best there was. So this is not just going to fetch a premium price. It's going to fetch the premium of premium prices. This is the greatest thing you'll ever touch in your life. You won't see anything this beautiful ever again. Hand it back to him. Well, that sounds pretty good to me. I think that... Uh... Also, it might be cursed. Can we find an out-of-town buyer? Uh, the, the thing I said about being cursed means that we're carrying a curse with us until we get there. Mm, bring them down. So I think as long as we're okay, yeah, we're good. Well, I hate to point this out, gentlemen, but we're stuck here. So what you're saying is it That's might not, not be good to start a crime war. Yeah. We can't get out. <laughs> hey, I don't judge. I'm just saying we can't involve an out-of-town buyer. I mean, you won't be bored with, like... It's true. I, You know what? I'm probably going to get pretty restless stuck here for a couple months, so we could have a fun winter. I am on board for that. So Baldwin's just, like, increasingly frowned, um, a deepening frown in his face, and I think he finally just says, this is sounding more and more dangerous by the minute. I have a feeling, in fact... I'm pretty sure I'm certain that some of you don't really know what you're getting into. I hear that all the time. And I just don't believe it. What am I even doing here? And I think, I think Borman just sort of uh, scoop up a handful of coin or two and just sort of say to the rest of the team, look, if you need me, you know where to find me. Otherwise, I'm out of here. And so I think... Baldwin's going to just try and scoop up as, as much like a reasonable amount of, of coin in his hands and just sort of get out of there. Baldwin, wait, wait, wait. Don't you want to... Don't you want to see where this goes? Wouldn't this be so uh, much fun? I mean, what if you really... Think of the reward. Think of how much money we could have. You would never have to go plunging into tombs like this to kill shadows and ghosts unless you wanted to, which is totally fine. But the point is you wouldn't have to. We could have... We could have it all. I mean, really great wealth with little effort is the greatest treasure of all. Listen to my this man he's talking about. My friend, you won't need a shield. You'll have my mighty thews. And I, um, I'll always be there to sing you a song. And I just sort of looks up. It's not unusual to be loved. Um, who, what's the name of the crime boss that uh, Kimbo works for? Mickey One Eye. One Eye, okay. That doesn't sound like ominous at all. No, not at all. Um, it's easy. We just take the other one. If he's lost one, he'll lose the other eventually. He's clearly clumsy. What has he told you, Kimbo, about uh, about what happened to that eye? Every uh, every time you ask, it's a, a different story. Right, okay. One time he lost it to a minotaur. Another time he staked it in a game of poker. Third time, lost it to a good woman. So, as a fellow resident of Jawbone, what do I know about uh, One Eye, Mickey One Eye's reputation? Yeah, he's not someone you want to fuck with. That's the first thing you hear. Like anytime you mention his name and ask a question, that's the first thing people tell you. But like, he is—it's not a big town, and like he has to live here and do business here. So there are limits to what he's willing to do to people and like how many people he's willing to kill and maim. He can be reasoned with, he can be paid off. Uh, he has an ongoing kind of, um, it's not a feud, it's more of a like a one-upmanship thing going on with uh, with Victor Mullahan, the like second richest man in town or maybe the richest, depends on who you ask. And uh, he cannot resist a bet, which is why that 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 particular story about the like how he lost his eye is probably true. Interesting. Well, yeah. and 
I mean, Kimbo's the only one that he's going to be personally mad at. The rest of us will just be, it'll be business. And, you know, Kimbo, if, if, that's, the, if that's a decision you're, you want to make in your life, I'm, I'm certainly no one to stand in your way. But, I mean, that's the thing. He's not going to come for, like, our families. He's going to be like, oh, it's those guys who sold that thing to someone else. I'm concerned that he's going to think, no, it's those guys who stole what was rightfully mine. From the... Well, then I'll sit him down and explain how property laws work, because this is something that's been explained to me since I got to civilization. And I'm pretty sure that something in the basement of a haunted temple doesn't count as his. So Baldwin literally goes up to the closest wall and just starts smacking his head against the wall. <laughs> Finds it, or maybe the crane. Just... Um, you're, you're, uh, you're just going to... You're just gonna give the the wall a wall ache. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, you're yeah. All you do is hurt your head. Come on, Baldwin. You know you want a piece of this. I mean, what, what, Kimbo didn't. What you kind of point are we talking here? Didn't you just say that he suspected? Real that the, the thing is made of his copy. Hmm? Oh, um, if you misheard, sorry. Um, what sort of um. What actual coin are we looking at here? Like, put, uh, put it on. How much is that worth? Let me see. I'm. One day I will like know how much money is worth in the world. Um, <laughs> that mean, like, there's two hundred uh, coin, two hundred okay. coin here in this room. So yeah, that's fifty um, piece if you split it. And like a Canadian dollar or yeah, you know. it's not quite all, the equivalent of a hoard all by itself. Um, but yeah. it is, let's, uh, let me, where is the dice room here? It's on here somewhere. Uh, okay. It is a unique, a unique item. So, uh, we'll roll for it. Um, five D. So it, it's, it is worth $1,300. Or 1300 gold um just as a general rule now like whether it's worth that much to any particular person like you know you, you have to find somebody willing to pay you that for it but that's how much like if someone was a, were appraising it that's how much they would tell you 1300 so for a mega lifestyle that's sort of not it's not a tiny sum by any measure even split yeah that that that'll that will keep you from having to, you know, fight ghosts in tombs for a good long time. What do you so if someone, that? yeah, could be fine. Right. Um, just, yeah. Anyway, um, so I think we go for it. What, Kimbo and, uh, well, uh, Lucian, are you in? Strongly agree. This is the great plan. This is about Excellent. wealthy. Terrible plan. I know it's great, isn't it? Okay, yeah. Um, well, like you can you can leave the temple anytime. You could like continue to look around. You could um, go straight to uh, Mickey One Eye. You could go straight to Mullahan. There's many things you could do right now. Do we want to leave that for next time? Maybe. Um. Yeah. Sure. That'll, that'll give us time to like do the end of session stuff. Sounds good. Mm. You figure out what you will do with this uh, this thing. Okay. Indeed. The next step is to like convincingly report that no, we didn't find the thing you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. Coming and up with a story and <laughs> that one is gonna be I mean, maybe it just wasn't there. Well, I say we Must just be something else causing all the ghosts. Yeah, we just tell them that we found a coffin and a whole bunch of coins. Oh, actually, there is a coffin. Um, if I tap my sword on it, nothing, nothing popping up there. Uh, no, I mean the coffin's open and it's empty. Oh, I see. Didn't realize. Um, you know, it's it's kind of odd that like, um, yeah, I mean you're under a temple. This would be a good place for a crypt, but there's one coffin and it's empty. Uh, that's a little odd, but. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe people were, maybe they were storing something in it. Who knows? Um, sounds like the priests here were smugglers. Yeah. It is, it is highly suspect. 
<laughs> Sounds like that might possibly be a thing, huh? I went into the wrong business. Does anybody have a thing they want to do before, like, like while they're still here? Um, or could we just say, like, okay, you, you, you leave and you're going somewhere. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 the only thing I want to do is check out the coffin, but you already said it was open, so. Um, I mean, you can, like, you know, you can check it out closer if you want. If you want to, um, you, you've got uh, dead and undead. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think this counts as dead, at least. You can uh, so you just ask a question on it, or? Uh, there's no indication as to uh, if it was actually used for a body. Yeah, it's been used. Uh, like, there are kind of marks of, like, um, there are dirt, there's dirt, um, like, where the feet would go. Mm -hmm. um and like the lid has clearly been like the edges are sort of a little bit kind of rounded off you know like it's like it's been opened and closed a lot um and like the whole there are holes where there would have been nails but there the nails are gone and like you can just see the holes that that would have hold, held the lid on um well I suggest we leave before it gets late. Mm. Um, somebody probably sleeps in this. What if we got them on our side? Hmm. Two of you are locals, right? You would know this. Um, yeah, I think you could you can put a little bit of information together here because you know that there was a vampire who like terrorized the town three years ago. And that said vampire was killed, like, in the woods near here. And you have probably just found its hiding place. Interesting. So that vampire was confirmed destroyed, not like... Uh, yeah, vampire is definitely dead, and there have been, like, no, uh, you know, no subsequent mm -hmm. bodies found with holes in their necks, you know, since then. Okay. So I'll, I'll relay that information, obviously. Um... But I think we've found everything of value in the room, unless we do a, like a more detailed search. But there is a door, and I just re realized that it would not be hidden from this side. Um, there is a door, oh. and you can open it. It's not locked. Uh, if you're on the other side of it, it would be hidden. Like you can kind of see that it would just blend into the wall. But um, you, mm -hmm. you, if you go through it, it's it's just it's the actual crypt. Like, there are coffins. Oh. Some of them are empty and open. Some of them are closed. Uh, but this is, like, the actual legitimate uh, the burial. Real. Yeah, I don't think we need to go that way. Um, unless you want to go right through the positions of the, the, the true dead. So, um, yeah. Did we did we actually end up clearing out the poltergeist earlier? Did that... Yeah, yeah, the poltergeist. I, yeah, I think based on your sword, you would know that the poltergeist mm -hmm. uh, died or left or like it's it's not here. I, I think well, I'm I, I'm satisfied. So Paul will be like, put the sword away. I just the sword is like there is a very faint glow. Is uh, a faint glow still? Or, yeah, yeah. It's um. There's nothing in your like immediate proximity, but like. Eh, somewhere in the general area, there is certainly still something undead. With our original job, where we like contracted, we didn't really have a contract or anything. We, um, it was Kimbo who asked us to put us together. Um, and I was just going, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know that the priest will pay you, like if you go back and report that, hey, the church is safe now. That's a convenient way to sort of like cover, uh, uh, cover our asses and sort of say, hey, we we got paid this much from the church not didn't find anything of value in the huh. temple itself yeah an entire temple that they can use again certainly worth 200 gold yeah uh hmm, yes so i think Baldwin will sort of like just sort of oh, yeah um, we'll just suggest let's let's just clear out the rest of the temple maybe if we start at the crypt and work our way back up the main areas we'll, we'll find the rest of the whatever else is here um 
yeah, I think we can like safely say you do that. Um, you have found everything that you know. You found a sleeve, you found an empty coffin, a wooden sword, two hundred gold, two uh, weird copper discs, and this weird obsidian idol. Um, well, I, I so Baldwin's very satisfied with with that. Then, yeah, that seems like quite a haul. That's quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, now you got to figure out what to do with it, uh, but uh, that can be next session. <laughs>